Hello again, David Moore, and I've got Robert Smith, Peregrine Private Capital, and we're talking about a little bit about a hypothetical recession and talking about stability to interest rates. We're talking about inflation a little bit, and we were talking a little bit about big boxes, and now we're talking about uh, maybe doors and what kind of doors and things to protect yourself. So... If we hypothetically do see some type of recession, what, what should people be looking at? I think, David, uh, you know, we've been talking about this on our website for quite some time in anticipation of a recession. You've simply got to get back to basics. I mean, uh, as bad as an economy can get, people still need a roof over their head. They still need food in their stomach. And despite the current administration's best efforts to the opposite, they still need to put gas in their cars and they still need medical care. So you really, really need to focus on those things that uh, are most uh, most recession resistant and in need all of the time. And it again, it's it. I think you can kind of kill two birds with one stone here from the standpoint that we talked about the advantage of operating assets and assuming full occupancy, our ability to increase, increase rents in an aggressive manner as possible off of the left coast to keep you ahead of inflation. Well, those operating assets, whether they're apartment properties, uh, self-storage properties, senior living properties, manufactured housing, all of those are very core asset types that people are going to be very, very hard pressed to move away from or be forced away from during a recession. So I think given how uncertain or problematic the current environment is and the future may be, you are well served to invest as defensively as possible and try to focus on those asset types and try very, very hard not to overpay for assets. Because again, you know, we're, I think most people recognize now, we've been telling people for a long time that we're very, very, very late in the asset price cycle, meaning all assets, stocks, bonds, housing, been pushed way, way up because of free money. We're over the top. Bonds are going down, stocks are going down, and at some point in time, real estate may also correct in price. So I think when you are relocating, you're doing a 1031 exchange through you guys, I think you have to do as much homework as possible and be as patient as possible to try to find the best value in those core asset types that people will not be forced away from even in recession. I think so, that's your safest bet. So let me, I'm, I'm going to sort of ask you a question in the form of an answer a little bit. I have a leading question, I guess I should say. We're talking about value. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have... People chasing yields today. I mean, you, you've definitely had a compression in, in those yields. And, and how many of the people you're working with today are just, they, they still want the, the ultimate ROI? And is that something they should be chasing or they should be looking at something and understanding that the things with maybe the highest ROIs are typically going to be the most volatile or the most vulnerable? Right. I mean, what, what are you seeing people do and what are you how are you sort of addressing their their desires or needs or expectations? No, you're exactly right. Uh, unfortunately, when markets are at the top and prices are at their peak, yields on all assets tend to be at the lowest. And people being people have a tendency to chase yield at market tops which is absolutely the wrong thing to do uh, because real estate's no different than the bond market. Risk is commensurate with return. And so the more desirable the asset class is historically, uh, the lower the cash on cash return tends to be. I mean, there's a direct relationship. You look at the multifamily sector right now, which historically has been number three 
from a commercial property type in terms of total return. Uh, number one is self-storage, and number two is uh, senior living. But you look at the uh, uh, current acquisition cap rates on apartment properties around the United States. It's probably hovering around 3.5%, which is on historical uh, basis, very low. But that's because those assets over the last four or five years have appreciated a great deal, in turn compressing the acquisition cap rate and the corresponding cash flow. So I think in an environment like this, you're much better served uh, accepting a lower cash flow and a safer asset type and potentially more appreciation once we get through whatever is coming. But you're, you are exactly right. People are still uh, trying to squeeze as much juice you know, out of the lemon as they possibly can, and um, it doesn't always make lemonade, so it's yeah. probably not the best idea. Well, like I mentioned at the top today, and we're talking once again, it's mid-June in 2022, but uh, I mentioned Ron Stash, uh, the gentleman that, that uh, took care of this recession investing article that I pull out every half decade or so. But uh, another one of my uh, mentors, a great friend, unfortunately, we lost him recently, uh, Bob Nelson, the 1031 guru. And, and he, he always made the comment, he says, look, re- you know, real estate's not a get rich quickly scheme. It's a get rich slowly but surely scheme. And he had one golden rule, and I think that we all need to look at this, is, is do not sell real estate in, in, a, in a recession. And, and so I think when you're looking at what you want to buy and chasing those yields, you got to understand, it's like, okay, if you're in an exchange, you've got this finite amount of time, you've got to get something done. You're, you're selling something today, it's a great time to sell, hard time to buy, but you better be buying something that you're not going to have to sell. And, and I think well that, 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 yeah. that uh, well being a little more conservative is a great thing. So uh, we might come back and talk about that another, a, a, a little bit more in another couple of minutes. But I'd like to sign off real quick. Don't go away. We'll be right back. David Moore with Robert Smith of Peregrine Private Capital. Thank you. Thank you.